Checking in. Not a whole lot, man. Not a whole lot. Just hanging out with. Uh, any houses today? With uh, Penny. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. She's, cool. It's How's she doing? Good. Three o'clock, man. You know, we gotta go pick her oh, up from yeah. it's from school. Kind of like three o'clock in the afternoon. Oh, yeah. God. Day goes quick. All right. Today we're gonna do some market analysis. We're gonna use PropStream. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Dave and I were chatting earlier, okay. and we said uh, we wanted to start exploring other markets. Not that St. Louis isn't a big enough market for us, but we've had, you know, so many people say, "Hey, are you guys virtual wholesaling?" Yada yada. And we said, "No," but. And we didn't really have a reason for why not. Um, so we said, hey, let's look at some other markets. And we haven't actually chatted about this. But I say, I say let's look at markets that we would want to hold rentals in as well. Yeah, let's like, do it. That's my, let's jump right in. Let's my personal this. opinion. So right. today we're going to be talking about PropStream, guys. PropStream is where we run all of our MLS comps. It is also where we pull our motivated seller list. They just uh, released a mobile app, which is Awesome. So now on the fly, I can determine what a property owner might owe. I'm gonna scoot in here, bud. Yep, yep. Get, get butt to butt here. Butt to butt. <laughs> um, use it to determine what a property owner owes um, on a property in terms of you know their mortgage, and you know just a whole slew of really really informa- uh, good information that that we can use um, to help determine the ARV of a property, but also use the the motivated seller list that we're able to pull as well to um, to market to those. So PropStream is really where we do the majority of our comps. I have MLS access, and honestly, I haven't been in there in, shoot, it's probably been five or six months because I just go to PropStream because it's also there. Mm-hmm. Like, I know you're a broker, so you you know, or all about the MLS, but I sometimes walk in and catch you looking at oh, PropStream. Oh, dude, I was just about to pull up PropStream <laughs> again so I can play with it while we're playing yeah, with it. Put the it. lotion away, buddy. Yeah, dude. No, <laughs> PropStream. Just joking. PropStream is awesome. Right. I mean, it really is. It just, it makes it simple. Like, it's, it's so awesome. simple. Yeah, it's yeah. just awesome. So um, let's talk a little bit about some of the markets that we were, you know, wanting to maybe explore as. And why, I guess, And why, too. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think Kansas City would be a great market for us to look into in terms of doing some virtual wholesaling. Yeah, so uh, I do I do geographically, too, because I think of other Midwestern cities are linear markets similar to ours, meaning they don't have the big cycles on, like, the West and East Coast where you'll hear about, oh, the market's crashing and yada, yada. We don't experience that to the same degree as the coasts. I feel like we always, when we hear there's a market crash out there, we've got six to 12 months before we're going to feel it here. And by feel it here, it's to a much lesser degree. Like, Dave, here's what I kind of, my analogy on this one is when there's a hurricane that comes up uh, in Florida or in uh, New Orleans, comes up the coast, I know that for the next week, we're going to have a lot of rain. (laughs) <laughs> yeah. But we're not going to have a hurricane. Yeah. We're going to have a lot of rain. So I think that's kind of a similar thing here in the Midwest when the market's crashing, the market's crashing. I'm like, we might see prices go down a little bit. That's just that's just my experience. Again, uh, how does that relate to running comps and market analysis? I'm talking about linear markets. Okay. I love investing <laughs> in linear markets here in the Midwest. Oh, okay, I see. Yeah, so yeah. what I'm saying is I want to invest in other linear markets. I'm not suggesting that we jump to New York. Yeah, not at all. I want to stick in the Midwest because... Los Angeles, exactly. The rules and the laws are going to be similar to where we're already located at. Um, the prices are going to be cheaper in terms of making it more rental available to most of the other investors out there. I mean... So again, and That's I think my two cents. oh, I agree, and I think that every market is hyper local, meaning we have to look at each market individually, and that's why we're going to do what we're about to do, which is dive into uh, a different market, and we probably won't get to too many today. So the one thing I do like about something in our own state, Mike, is mm-hmm. nothing would change necessarily, right? Like the title company in a different market would obviously be in a different market, mm-hmm. but like we know all the rules for our own state. We know most of them for our state. I would, I would assume, broker, you know, I would assume that it's not going to change much, Dave. <laughs> right. But again, you know what happens once you get out, yeah. once you get out of your comfort zone is things do well, let's change. Let's look at a couple markets here. I'm curious. Well, let's so, start in our state, though. Like you said, yeah, Kansas let's City. Start in our state. So you know, when you go into prop stream, it's going to default to your to your current location. Um, man, I own properties in Columbia, Missouri, and you just cannot find a deal. 
I'm actually listing two of my properties in Columbia right now just because the prices are so high. Um, what was the, the values are crazy, man. Like you, it, that's a, that is a tough city to wholesale in. It's been done. I know a guy, my buddy mm-hmm. Ron, does a ton of them there, but that market is just hard compared to the bigger markets, in my opinion. So I'm going to say KC would be first choice for us at this point. So I agree. I think oh, Kansas yeah. City or Springfield, Missouri. Oh, Springfield too. I like, uh, yeah, I like both those too. markets. Uh, Columbia, and again. Let's look at Kansas City and Springfield. That's let's great. do it. Let's, let's do those two. two. So one thing I do really like about PropStream over here in the top right-hand corner, you have the ability to – uh, use this map, and it kind of has a, a legend, and it can color code uh, heat map, I guess you could say. So we're looking here at Kansas City. I have, I don't know much about Kansas City. Mike, do you? It's kind of like a weather map here, doesn't it? It does. Kind of crazy, but it's a really neat feature. I think you got to go in a little. Well. Is this, that just the number? That's sales, right? This right here, the first one that I clicked on, this is estimated value. So the light blue is less than 100K. So that's the way I look at that is that's going to be your rental areas, right? I mean, for the most part. Uh, or more affordable housing, at least. Oh, it's gonna say under a hundred. You might be talking places we don't want to invest, though. Like I'm looking, I want right around a hundred, a hundred thousand. Okay, so that's fine. That's fine. I'm just trying to, yeah, yeah. So no, no, no. I know. Just keep it simple. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah. cool. So you got, you know, basically, I'm just kind of trying to find. I think you have to hit this button. Yeah. Quick. See, I think I like those little bit darker blues because I'm assuming that's prices going up just a yeah, little bit. I see where you're going with this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Because I like, think of North, think of North St. Louis, man. Okay. In our market, you're going to have light, light blue up there. Oh, oh, oh. This thing is, okay. There this thing's going go. crazy on us today. Oh, well, you can zoom way in. We're going to go up right here. All right, easy trigger. I know. Dave's it's, getting real. Struggles. Okay, so the cool thing, though, that I like about this is there's a lot of different things that you can look at. So let's let this load. So this is the estimated value. Estimated value by square foot may be something that you want to look at as mm. well. Again, you can see in the top. Left up here, you got a lot of light blues, and then this whole side here. So let's go look at yeah, so price growth. This is something that definitely helps, I think, when you're looking at your markets. And I'm going to do a three-year growth. I'd like to zoom in a hair, but I don't want to go trigger happy. So you are having a, quite a bit of price growth in this little center area right here. Dang, was that the same as the light blue for just the, the values earlier? Well, take a look. So I'm I not going to move the map at all. So and th- I'm not going to move my eyes at all. Okay, perfect. <laughs> this is the three-year growth. So the red is going to be 100% growth, essentially. And the light blue, which we don't really see much or any of, is going to be 100% loss. So now I'm going to go and I'm going to do the estimated value by square foot. And then I'm going to do the estimated values in general. Yeah, so it is so, if those lower value ones are popping up in va- in prices. I mean, those those are the ones that have the most appreciation for the most That's part. crazy. That cool? Yep. So now let's go and let's look at the rental values. Here's the rent. So here's rent price. So this is actually going to be very helpful if you're looking for rental properties or if you're looking to wholesale the landlords, right? Mm-hmm. You got a lot of options here. I think I need to move in just a hair. Here we go. Let's try that. Maybe that'll make it speed up just a little bit here. So let's do rent price, or maybe do rent, yeah, rent price. There it goes. It's just loading a little slow. Yeah, and typically it's a little bit quicker for us, but again, we're uh, we're running a camera and some mics and everything through the system here, so it's... Come on. There it goes. Okay, so I'm still seeing this area and this area being pretty consistent in terms of growth as a, as a whole, right, in terms of the rent prices... Now, this dark blue puts us somewhere around maybe 900 to 1,000, give or take. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, as well as the value per foot in these areas, the estimated value per square foot. So, you know, you got a lot of consistencies in this little corridor and this top area here. Now, the one thing I do see changing is you got red hot spots that appear in this area whenever you're talking about growth, I believe it was. No, well, a little bit in there. So you got some growth that gets going on in there. And then your estimated values as a whole, you got some red hot spots. So I'm thinking that, you know, those are going to be the highest, most expensive areas, the nicest parts of town, Mm -hmm. places where it's going to be very difficult to get offers accepted below 80%. Agree, yeah. You know, I mean, you're going to, it's going to be very difficult. You're going to have to come in very competitively. They're going to. They're going to go fast. So I would think this area here would be a great place to do some marketing to. 
Um, even these blue areas, Mike, around the sides of the of the of the middle areas that are real red, but I think that you'd have you know easy easy access to get deals in these light blue areas. Vacant. Properties. I suspect you will as well, and I would love to chat with somebody in Kansas City without doing any more research or any more digging, mm -hmm. and just ask them what they say about the scroll in a little, and let's just see what areas that is. Yeah. So Mission Hills. Is this, and that's so, what I, I don't so even right know if now, this is. We're at, we're at estimated values. So these are million dollar. Uh, yeah. So and I, I think here. that we were investing over there just a little bit more to the right. Or we were, I was interested in where that, what is that? 71. Yeah. Between those 71 and what's that other one there? 420. Is that what that says, Dave? Uh, It's hard for me to see. Yeah, but in between those those roadways, those highways, mm -hmm. again, was kind of where I was thinking look like pretty good spots. So I would love to have a can rent price per bedroom. Let's see what this pulls up. I would love to have somebody from Kansas City just tell us that is. Yeah, see, I'm still getting this a lot of. I know up this there area as well. Here and this whole it's not loading the square right here for some reason. Yeah, but that's where we there want. There it goes. Be. But yeah, and then this whole area right here, man, I'm telling you, that's. That's going to be the easy, that's the low-hanging fruit. Let's that's what it, it looks like. Way. Now, yeah. if you're trying to do really nice fix and flips, I would say this dark blue to, to this green is going to be a better place for you to target because you're going to have higher values. The growth in those areas is going to be a little bit more stable. It's not going to be so such an explosive growth. But that also means that the values are going to hold stronger in those areas. You're also going to have higher values, which means that you're going to get higher spreads. You do a ten a ten percent spread on a fifty thousand dollar deal, guys. That's only five, five grand. grand as a you know as a as a as a fee, right? But if you do a a ten percent spread on a million dollar house, that's a hundred thousand dollar fee. You could essentially mark it up, and it's still the same percent when you're using your calculators and everything. So, really, 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 really love the ability to kind of see the prices, the rents, the values. Uh, it also has some MLS information in here, so we could do um, listing price per square foot. So you, this would be something that's a little bit more hyper local. You could do listing price. So again, it's going to show all of your properties that are on the market. Again, you got that, you got that red area right in there. So man, Mission. I don't know shoot about <laughs> Kansas City. <laughs> Trying right? to keep it like PG, I literally huh? don't know shit about Kansas City. I don't. So Mission Woods or Mission Hills. Yeah, scroll Westwood up. Hills. I mean, this looks like your Ledoux. Your I was going to say, that's going to be the, the price your, areas, your man. I know we got to be St. Louis area, right? up a little bit more to the top, uh, a little bit to the right of that, yeah, and I think we're in definitely. business. So a lot of great little tools in here. Let's take a look at the price growth over five years just to kind of see. So, I mean, everything's going to be going up in value over five years. So that one doesn't really do us too much. But maybe if you look at the six-month. So, Mike, look what's happening, Mike. Yeah, there we had the booming. top left up there, and then we had this little right side. But if you're looking at just the most six, like the six month growth, if you were to ask me where the flippers are going in, in this city right now, I would say there. That's just my two cents, at least right now. Probably because it's lower, it's more affordable properties that probably rent for higher amount. So, in terms of return on investment, again, there's money getting. There's money city. going into that area. Is what money it looks going like. into that area. That's what right. I'm saying. Like they're they're developing. So, love all these tools. Um, it, uh, again, they're up in the right hand corner, guys. Click on analytic analytics right here, and you can do that. You can look at any different city. Another cool thing is, let's say that you know Mike and I did want to do some marketing, you know, in this blue area that we had found. Let's just assume that it was right here. We could highlight that particular area. And very simply with PropStream, if we wanted to do some sort of a marketing campaign, we could essentially target all of the and I and I just drew randomly. This isn't exactly mm -hmm. where those you know where it might need to be, but just as an example here, and we can actually pull up a list of all the properties within this area, which is really really cool. And then we can actually pull out the vacants. We can pull out the absentees. We can pull out. I've never tried this one, and just because we saw such a unique pattern where there's a really hot spot up there and then a pretty hot spot on the right, can you do two at once, two two locations at once, Dave? I don't, I don't, I don't think you oh, can. I don't think Whoa. so. I don't know what's going on here. I don't think Trigger so. happy today, man. Let me look. 
Yeah, I just want to. I I, uh, I don't think well. Do two you don't need to. So yeah. the way you would do it though, you'd highlight that. I can just do a small little thing. So let's just say you want Kickapoo. Mm-hmm. That's a funny little name, and it'll be a lot quicker when you're doing a smaller area. But it'll let you do I think up to two million or something crazy. Like yeah. That. So just in this little area right here, right? There's two thousand nine hundred and seventeen properties. If I wanted to look at just the high equities, I could click this and I could get a list of just the high equities. If I wanted to get a list of just the vacants, I could get the vacants right here. This is so crazy, right? So I could pull this list. Now, we, we run vacants for zip codes. We do it for entire counties, entire cities. Um, you know, you can pull these massive lists, but I really love the ability to export. Yeah, well, and, really, that's, what, really and that's exactly what Dave, I think, is getting at, or to my point about doing two areas. You just do the, select the one. Export it, then select the second one, same criteria, export it, right. and you can build different lists in there. So you could build the one list of, you know, hotspots, KC, whatever you wanted to call yep. it, uh, to where you could highlight just those properties. Now let's take a look at Springfield, Mike. I honestly know less about Springfield. It's, I've at least driven through Kansas City and spent the night a couple times. You've never, been to, you've never driven through Springfield? What about, like, Table Rock Lake? Man, I think I've flown into Down Springfield there? way a long time ago whenever yeah. I was... Yeah, uh, flying little flying old little planes, planes yeah. and, and whatnot. But so it's a much smaller market. I'd say it's probably know much about it, it's probably a bit bigger than uh, Columbia. So check this out. There's eighty nine thousand properties in Springfield. Mm-hmm. It's not very. It's not that small. I mean, there's a hundred thousand properties. You guys can't see what I can see. Now you can. Oops. In Springfield here, right? So let's take a little look. See and. I'm going to just kill this so we can get our full picture. We're going to zoom in just a hair. I'm assuming this is going to cover the majority of the city. Let's start, Mike, with just a estimated value. So this mm-hmm. has nothing to do with square footage or anything like that. And let's just kind of see if we can get an idea of where the nice places are. All right. I think similar to... I was going to say, you're going to want to see a little bit outside the city because I think you're going to have some of the nicer areas a little bit yeah, further out. Suburb area. Yeah, and that's the thing. Like, Let's try value per foot, see if we can't get this to load a little faster here. And you're familiar with Columbia. We this damn thing in. We do. With Columbia, I mean, you know, when you're in more rural areas, it's okay to drive 20 minutes outside of yeah. town and still be in town. Yeah, you and know? your comps don't need to necessarily be right next door. Yeah. Yeah, because it's maybe spread out a little bit. It's just oh, different. Boy. Oops. There we go. Okay, cool. We're getting somewhere now. Filling in the green in the, or in the middle there. Yeah, so I guess, the you know what? It's probably because you this is the first time you've played with Springfield. It has to pull all it's that data pull all in. Right, here we go. Figure now it all out. Do all the calculations. So where is the university? There's a college here, right? Yeah, I've been to that airport. I know that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, geez, 901 South Main or South uh, – man, you're really putting me on the spot there. That's my alma mater, so Southwest Missouri here? State. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, you should know this. I know. Look at uh, – just, just – yeah, I should pull that up. All that's, right, so while this is doing that, I'm going to go just and take a look at some of the growth here. Let's look at the three-year growth. Maybe this will load a little faster for us here. And just kind of see if we find some hot spots. Doesn't look like there's a whole lot of. 901 South National. I knew it was 901 something. What did I say? South Main? Mm hmm. Come on now. Yeah, it's right there on the map, isn't it? Yeah, it's just loading Missouri State. State. There it goes. Yeah, there's the university. Yeah, so anything walking or biking distance to that is basically a, I mean, would have the opportunity to be a, um, a student rental okay. or college, you know, rental. So. And there's also there's a, there's a couple other ones. There's like a Drury University up there, which is a little bit north of that campus, I believe. Uh, and I know that the further north you get, it, at least it used to be, it was a little bit lower value area. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't want to go way north of the city, but... Okay, here we go. Now it's starting to work, but it's still not doing that little area right there. Which area is that? Right there in the middle. It's got like a square that's missing. Yeah? I'm scrolling on it. Is that a... Oh. See the square? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, square got a lot bigger that time. Yeah. <laughs> the whole city. All right. 
So let's we gotta analyze this market though. I, we need this damn thing to start working so we can see where these hot spots are at. Now, let's just leave it be for a second. And while we're doing let that, it work. Let it do All its right. thing just for a second. So while it's doing that, um, I want to talk a little bit about the um, the type of marketing that I that I want to start doing in in the secondary market that we decide to go into. Okay. Right? That may be Springfield, that may be uh, Kansas City. So what would be our goal? I know you had mentioned with our property manager in the past that we were maybe wanting to buy and hold some rentals there, but we don't really have a crew to do the rehabs. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you're looking and interested to maybe try to add to the team? Or are you wanting to maybe just start wholesaling to get familiar with that market? Both. Again, okay. so it, well, it depends on the market, Dave. Yeah. If we go to Springfield, so our property manager already said that he has someone else there that manages property. So it's basically going to be the same property manager. So in Springfield, if we started playing around there, started doing some wholesaling, and we found a sweet deal or two, I would love to hold in Springfield. Okay. I like the market. I think it's solid. I don't think it's going anywhere. Um, Kansas City, I wouldn't be as comfortable with, but it's only because I don't have a property manager there. Indianapolis, same thing. Mm -hmm. Any uh, any other market, I would say I'm with you, or at least my thought is, let's wholesale there. Okay. Until we are comfortable with that market, until we've got, you know, more of a foothold. Neither what, what one do you of think? us want to go to this market ever. Uh, at least I don't. That's my two cents. If I'm going somewhere, it's going to be on vacation. So not to go check on rental properties in another city. True. True. So the reason that I don't necessarily rule it out, though, mm -hmm. is because I like going to other cities. So, like, in spring... work, though? Well, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> you, buy vaca you buy rental properties in places you want to vacation? Yeah. Because yeah. then guess what just happened? Your vacation just became a business expense. I get that. So... I don't really want a vacation in Springfield or Table Kansas Rock City, Lake, bro. Oh, Table Rock would be cool. Yeah. So you stop neat. through Springfield. Okay. You go to Table well, Rock. Let's pick Springfield then. Again, same thing, Kansas City. I'm, yeah, I'm not I'm not hot to trot on Kansas City, but right. I'll go to Kansas City every once in a while. I got friends there, visit people, you know? Yep. And it becomes a work uh billable expense. You would stop by your rental properties, do a little work on them. That's just the way my mind works. Yep. So again, any market that I buy rentals in, yes, I will go visit it. Okay. You hear that, IRS? <laughs> <laughs> Got it. I am visiting those rentals, Dave, 100% of the time. Okay, so let's get back over into PropStream. It looks like it was having some difficult, some technical difficulties here. Yeah, let's try logging out and logging back yeah, in, right? That might be our best bet. And let's see what we got. Yeah, so again, my my shorter-term plan would be, I, I think you're on the same pit mindset. Let's wholesale these another city first yeah let's wholesale let's, let's get to know the market a little yeah, bit yeah let's find out if these spreads are crazy if there's good market to invest in then right and we'll if they're not it. crazy and we can get some good area get some good properties in some good areas just like we do now i'd imagine we're going to keep the best and we're going to sell the rest mm -hmm. we're getting the spinning wheel of death oh here it goes all right so let's try this one more time springfield mo and we can let's let's not uh Springfield, Missouri. Okay. Now, I'm not going to touch this map. Just let it do its thing for a minute. I'm going to let it do its thing for a minute here. Yeah. So, let's do estimated values and just start there and see if we, and let's just let it be, not get too trigger happy, and just see if it loads. Honestly, I've never had an issue with this working, but it is 3.30. It's probably peak time for everyone to be using it. It's kind of what I'm thinking. Oh, there we go. All right. Let's leave it right there. So now we have, man, there's just a lot of little blue pockets, it looks like. Mm -hmm. And and when we do our own market, all of our rentals are in these dark blue areas. Mm -hmm. All of them. You know what I'm saying? So where did you live, Mike? Uh, I live right next to campus, man. So you were over in yeah. this area, probably right. somewhere right around bit. there? Yeah, right around there. Okay. Gotcha. So why is, oh, I didn't mean to do that. Why is all this light blue up here? Is this your lower income? Is this your correct? Oh man, easy. Yes, yeah, so I think it. I think there was more industrial. Didn't mean to do that. Yeah, oh, it's going crazy. Super sensitive. 
leaving it alone. Yeah, okay. Hands hands up, dude. Hands Come up. On. That's right. So let's have the mouse hover. So right there's here. more like commercial type stuff up there. Okay. Uh, so yeah, I mean, it's just like any other yeah, city where you don't necessarily. Right, right, right to the middle there. Mm -hmm. Okay. I got you. Yeah, so okay. exactly. So north of that, wouldn't necessarily want to buy. And this is kind of showing me the same thing. Mm hmm. Check this out. There is 2,296 vacants. That would be a great list to maybe start with. Mm -hmm. It doesn't even really matter what neighborhood it's in. If it's a high or a low, it's vacant, right? The peep, the chances of them being motivated are going to be super high. So look at this. This is actually a really cool tool. I'm glad I'm doing this. We can leave the heat map up here, add the vacants, and then if we wanted to, we could click here and we could actually draw around these light blue vacants oh no i don't think you should use an apple mouse i think it's because it's all the little is it yeah that it makes this thing go crazy i need to downgrade my mouse so I can use <laughs> this thing a little bit better but see now it's working real fast this is nuts but again if i wanted to look and just get some here we go i'll just do a quick big bigger area like this but i could essentially pull all the vacants out of just this right here. So like, boom, that would be a great list right there just to start with, or just hit all of the vacants. There's only 2,000 of them. So, you know, pull th pulling down 2,000 vacants um, and skip tracing them and cold calling and cold texting, even sending them a letter in the mail, a postcard, whatever that might be, um, you know, wouldn't be that expensive. What's 2,000 postcards cost? About 50 cents a pop? Mm -hmm, maybe $1,000. So 1,000 bucks. Um, so that would be, well, you know, an easy way to get started. So this here, though, this is our estimated value. Let's jump over to the rental. So keep try to keep this picture in your mind. So this is the estimated value by square foot. So really, you're, you're not really gaining a whole lot of value by bigger areas unless it's really dark, it looks like. No, it has to be red. Yeah, the darker. Mm -hmm. Okay, I got you. So that doesn't help us a whole lot, but this does. So we have a lot of light blue up here, kind of around Springfield, um, right in the center, and then a couple scattered out. Now let's go to our rental values and let's look at the rent price per square foot and see if this anything jumps out at us on the rent price per square foot. So pretty relatively It's pretty stable, same. man. Now let's just look at the rent price, right? So this could vary really a lot from 500 to 5,000. And let's see if this gives us anything. It's kind of a funny text my dad just sent me. Yeah. So you know how uh, a lot of people are doing a lot of uh, text Maybe to so. get leads. You know, mm -hmm. you're texting, uh, cold texting, stuff like that. He just got one that said, hello, would you review a proposal for P.O. Box? I invest all over St. Louis. So, again, somebody did not scrub the list against <laughs> post office boxes. Right. So they're asking if he'll sell the post office box. Of course. Yeah, sure, man. Make an, make an offer. Make an offer. So, Mike, you know, above this right here, we're on the rent price. So, mm -hmm. again, I think the blue areas yep. are going to be the best for the rentals in this in this particular market. Also the vacants, though, mm -hmm. no matter what. So, just from this little bit of market analysis, we, 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 you know, we could come up with some pretty good marketing lists. Let's take a look at the growth. Let's maybe go to the three-year, see if anything jumps out. I was going to say, I am there's probably going to be some... It's going to be kind of blotchy, but good. See, I was guessing it wouldn't. I would bet it'd be very, very consistent. Uh, consistent. Maybe it will. Maybe it will. I mean, again, barring that little strip up north there. Okay. Okay. It's missing some squares. Let's try to zoom out a little and see if that does anything. Honestly, again, I've never had this issue. There you go. Whoa. There we go. Wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah, so it's um, it's not really wanting to cooperate with me right now. But I think you kind of got a, a I got general a idea. General idea so it is. All it's right. that that uh, so here's our five year. So you again you got, you got like these little pockets though, Mike, with no growth. So that's what I'm that's what is kind of worrying me. I wouldn't feel comfortable doing a blanket marketing campaign. I'd really want to narrow in like high equities, absentees, vacants. Yeah, you know, and you've still something along those lines. And I haven't done any filtering. I'm just looking at the, the broad, the broad market analysis. What are the little pinpoints? I thought that was your vacants uh, or no, absence or no, whatever. If I were to go do it this way and then click my vacants, oh, gotcha. See them like that. Yeah, so the vacants are going to be kind of all scattered out. 
But, yeah, I don't like that there's these, it's kind of blotchy. But, I, I don't think there's much development there, Dave. Yeah, maybe it isn't. I don't, again, I don't know yeah. anything about this city. Like, literally anything. Um, maybe check a look at the estimated Well, now you do. Per, yeah, now I do, exactly. Yeah. So this is the estimated value based on the bedroom. And, again, it's just kind of, one, oh, there it goes. Yeah, it is very blotchy, though, isn't it? Maybe that's just the way that these neighborhoods are I'm built. I'm pretty sure it's the way that it's that they're built, man. I don't think there's houses everywhere. I think there's a little more green space. Yep. Well, you like this market. It's all right. Let's start investing here. Maybe do a little bit of virtual wholesale. You want to try to you want to try to work in wholesale? I think I think it's a good area to, yeah, to I try. Think the first place we start with would be these vacants right here. And do you want do you like this area up here? No. You're more interested in these little darker blues? 100%. Okay. So, if we were to market in this area, I would suggest something along the lines of that. Mm hmm. That looks pretty good. And then let's go over here to our filters. So, we had owner occupied, any occupancy status, any. Uh, we don't want them on the market, so let's take off the MLS on the market. Let's go to our equity. We want to do a minimum equity of 30%. Our property characteristics, we want to do at least a two-bed. We'd like to have at least 850 square feet. So let's give it some time to catch up because I'm going fast. And let's see what that narrows down our marketing list to. Now, this is... This is going to be all the properties, and here's your little your little legend, right? So you got all the properties in this area. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, these are vacants, um, and I can remove the vacant. So now it's just two or more bedroom, 850 or more square foot off the market with 30% equity. The owner occupied is going to be any, and the occupancy status is also going to be any. Let it do its thing. Up I think, server game a little bit, bro. Yeah, I think uh, the reason that it had the vacant selected, I think you clicked vacants and then did the circle thing and or and then went into the filter. Mm -hmm. So it just kind of had it on by default. So there's multiple ways to do things. Like Dave. Yeah, exactly. Could have clicked that one on or he mm -hmm. had clicked it before. We really don't need this any of this on anymore at this point, so kind of got the area that we want to do some investing in. And while it loads, oh, come on. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you have to give it a couple minutes. Yeah, sometimes you got to give it It is time. what it is. All right. But that is how we're doing our market analysis, guys. We're using PropStream, we're using heat maps. We are looking at the estimated values, finding the hot spots finding the areas that are actually having really good growth. And then we're also looking at the amount of rent that's coming in and we're comparing the rental rates to the values, right? Sometimes, oh, there it goes, it just populated. Um, so we just got ourselves a list of 554 properties. Um, and again, I can alter my filter to get more or less of these, but these are gonna be, the, these are gonna be our high equities. This is actually vacants too. So this is gonna be a very targeted list to start with. Uh, to presume motivation, um, I honestly would just suggest hitting every vacant in the whole city. Because, again, we're going to be looking to wholesale. We're not really looking for rentals right here. The area that we drew is more, really more of our rental areas. Mm -hmm. But to learn the market, uh, we're going to probably be doing blanket marketing with uh, vacants, high equities, absentee owners. Uh, what am I missing? Those, I mean, that's what that's we're looking really for, guys. Yeah. That we're going to look for in the beginning. Just to understand a broad idea of what is going on in the market guys check out prop stream if you want to run mls comps nationwide uh, there's a link in the description of this video depending on where you're watching it from and again we have been using it for about a year uh, we get all of our motivated seller lists from prop stream it doesn't matter what market you're you're wanting to get lists from or that you live in you could be anywhere I believe it's a USA only software at this point. I don't think it really works a whole lot in, in other areas. Um, 
But again, great place to run MLS comps, pull your lists, and do market analysis. Check it out. Link in the bio or in the description. Signing off.